Joining us is Dr. John Damacone, a professor of plant pathology. And we have a nice little laboratory here in the garden this year with all the rain, quite yeah. a few diseases. Yeah, we do. Uh, tomatoes are always good for uh, diseases and having a little class on what kind of diseases affect crops. So <laughs> tomatoes are very sensitive both to environmental type problems, chemical problems, and also uh, uh, disease, you know, diseases caused by microorganisms. So, well, hopefully today you can help us learn how to identify some of these and share what to do. The first one, uh, the damage is way down at the bottom. Yeah, we we see that when the when the fruit starts setting and uh, the plants get loaded with fruit, uh, they be, they seem to become more susceptible to these foliar diseases. And, and this one here looks like early blight, large round brown spots working their way up from the bottom of the plant upwards. And uh, we also have this bacterial spot here on another plant that we collected that has these uh, taller, uh, smaller spots. But they basically uh, all do the same thing. They uh, cause these spots in the middles of the leaves. And there'll be some on the edges, but mostly they're in the middles. Mm -hmm. And they'll uh, eventually uh, cause these leaves to shrivel up. And then you lose uh, uh, sun protection later on in the year. Right now it's not much of an issue because there's, that's very few leaves, but if we continue to get rain and it moves up on the plant, mm -hmm. it'll, uh, it'll cause a problem. So at this point, uh, from a sanitation standpoint, should we go ahead and remove the infected leaves? Yeah, uh, people do that, gardeners do that. I don't know how effective that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's not used on a because, commercial uh, scale. Because really, the, the, the dilemma about these diseases is there's an incubation period where it's kind of like catching a cold, where the plant became infected like uh, a week or two before you start seeing the symptoms. It's kind of mm -hmm. like catching a cold. Somebody gives you the virus and you know you, you start coughing right. about a week later. So there's always more leaves infected than what's showing. So when you pull leaves off, you may get them and you may not. And okay. then there's some that fall to the ground and they have spores and they move around. So uh, do our best to keep it yeah. clean and tight. The, the other thing you can do is you can spray for it. Uh, you can use a, a copper, uh, we call them copper fungicides, but they're also bactericides. So they, they're good on, uh, on bacterial spot as well as fungal diseases. Some of them are approved for organic production. Okay. Uh, most of the coppers are the same types. They're copper salts, and they, uh, they're all, one brand or another is all, uh, all the different types of coppers have organic uh, products mm -hmm. that are marketed through Omri, I guess. Yeah, that's right. a great resource to Right, so uh, you can look it up products. if you're really stringent about organic. Okay. Or if not, you can just buy any old copper off the shelf uh, in Walmart or any other store. Or you can go to uh, 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 farm supply dealers and they have things called Coside, um, a little uh, more active and easier to work with than some of the uh, liquids. But Okay, very good. Now next to that we have a, a different problem uh, <laughs> developing on yeah. this tomato, uh, where we have just one side of the plant yellowing Tur out. Right turning yellow and you don't see the spots in the middle of the leaves. Mm -hmm. So it looks to me like, and then these leaves, uh, the older ones that turn yellow uh, die from the outside in. That looks like fusarium wilt. Okay. So I'm guessing that that's a, a variety that's not resistant to mm -hmm. fusarium wilt. Many of the varieties that you get seed for or you buy will have a F designation for resistant f to fusarium wilt. That's a common soil disease. Mm -hmm. And that'll eventually kill the plant. So, so it's best yeah. to treat that through resistant varieties. Right. And you can get resistance in, in both open pollinated types and in hybrids. So um, there, it's pretty widely available in a lot of different varieties. So it doesn't have to limit us too bad. No, uh, <laughs> but there, you know, if you're, if you're a real stickler for heirlooms, many of those don't have mm -hmm. uh, fusarium resistance. You gotta hunt for that. Now here we have um, some similar symptoms of leaf curling, but this is one you said is likely not a disease. Right, mm -hmm. this is, uh, looks to me like, and I have it in my garden, and I've, we, ha we have had a lot of samples come in through the uh, clinic, and also we get digital images sent to us, what's wrong with this tomato plant. And this looks like physiological leaf roll. And um, it happens when it gets hot and humid. Mm -hmm. uh, when the summer starts and you have a fruit load, uh, there's probably 
six or seven different causes that have been attributed to this. So basically that tells you that, and, and they're <laughs> widely diverse, over fertilization, underwatering, overwatering, uh, excessive top growth, bad root growth, mm -hmm. uh, improper soil fertility. So basically that tells you that uh, the cause is really uncertain, but certain varieties get this and they just roll up and they produce normal crops. And the, the only issue is when, they, when it gets really severe, you lose your shade on the fruit right. because they're all rolled up. Okay. Sometimes they'll roll up from top to bottom and they won't, uh, they won't unroll. Sometimes it's a temporary thing where if you, know, you put water on them or the weather changes, they'll unroll. Okay. But uh, that's what uh, this is. And we've seen a lot of it in the state and a lot of people have sent pictures in and mm -hmm. samples in this year, so. Another one that's pretty uh, widespread this year is the beet curly top virus. And again, we have it here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good example here of the effects of a virus compared to like a, a non-virus or just a physiological problem with the plant that's causing these leaves to roll. You can see how stunted these plants yeah. are and they've stopped growing and they've rolled up and they have the purple veins in there. Mm -hmm. That's a beet curly top virus. It's a real problem in, in the western states. The mm -hmm. further west you go, California, Utah, New Mexico, it can be a limiting factor. Here in Oklahoma, it seems to be a, a sporadic problem. We'll have years where, you know, 10 or 15 percent of the plants will get it, and then we'll have other years where we won't see it at all. And with this, it's a virus, we can't treat it. Um, and it's transmitted by an insect that's probably long gone by now. <laughs> right, it's, that's exactly right, Kim. It's <laughs> transmitted by a leaf hopper, and it, uh, we, we don't exactly know when they show up or when they leave, but some, a certain percentage of them are carrying the virus. It's thought that they pick it up in the desert somewhere on some uh, overwintering plants in the desert. Mm -hmm. They become migratory and uh, they probably don't feed much on these tomatoes, but they just kind of visit it and taste it and see if they like it or not. And they leave that virus behind. So at this point, I would just go ahead and remove these, practice good sanitation and right. cut my losses on those plants. Right, those plants are not going to make any tomatoes. <laughs> well, <laughs> At least uh, not any that you want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a good, you know, year, I think, to take notes on your tomatoes, make notes on which ones are not getting the diseases, which ones are seeming to perform well That's true. here in Oklahoma. I, I planted uh, three or four different varieties in my garden this year, and I, I've noticed that I have uh, this bacterial spot, I, I have it in all of them, I, I've inherited that in my garden, but I, I noticed that in like the cherry tomatoes and some of the plum tomatoes, I have a lot more of it than mm -hmm. I do in uh, the uh, beefsteak type. So yeah, yeah it's, it's a good idea to, to look for that. And you know, if, if you've got this fusarium in your soil, definitely you wanna make, make a note of that. Mm -hmm. Notice which cultivars are showing right. resistance right. and try those again next year. Right, exactly. <laughs> Weed out the bad ones. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, Kim, it's good to be here today.